the entire idea of sharing um, gory images, um, I, I think there, it's not that it doesn't have its place. It for sure has its place. But I, I don't think it's useful for your, <coughs> I don't think it can be helpful or, har or I think in harm your heart psyche if you indulge in it too much. And I, I think there's, and it can even do something worse uh, that pushes you away. You know, or desensitizes you yeah. to all the atrocities that are being committed by by these Israelis. I just saw some poor brother today. Just he, it was like a picture of of uh, this heavy set brother. He was apparently uh, had a photo op with the Israelis. They, they seemed like they were doing something, some having some fun with him. It looked like they were in good moods, and then no, a that few was, moments later he was he was shot. And that's not what that was. What was that? The Israelis were taking what they've been doing now. They enter <laughs> southern Gaza. They're trying to show that they're helping civilians. Yeah. So they're showing that, okay, look, we're giving them water, we're giving them this. It's not like they're having fun. They're just basically saying, okay, look, we're... we're That's what I meant. Oh, yeah. okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, like, we're, we're the army of goodness, right? And then you find, like, within five hours later, the same person who's handicapped guy, old man, was, like, laying in a ditch dead. Like, and there was eyewitness accounts of other people from the video they put out that right when they gave them water, they took the water back and they were shooting at their feet, making them run away. Oh, no. Right? So this is, like, the, as you mentioned, the maniacal nature of these people. But I will say this, though. Yes, you're right. I think if you spend a lot of time looking at these videos, Videos, there is a sense of de desensitization that happens, right? It's just unfortunate as to reality. It happened to me during the, the Syrian civil war. I, I got to a point where I was, it was very normal to see a guy with a, a, a gaping hole in his skull. Like, I, I wouldn't bother me, right? Then I decided, you know, this is too much. This is abnormal, right? I mean, because you get so desensitized because like you, you want to see what's happening but then unconsciously you become desensitized so i stopped watching all that stuff so this is kind of like a shock again however i will say that for people who have not seen and are not familiar with the wars and the brutality that, that the muslims face in our countries when they see these pictures for the first time it's yeah. mind-blowing i'll tell you something i've been having an exchange with this um atheist uh totally hardcore Zionist because not because he loves Israel because he believes America's values are right right the whole thing and this is Hamas's fault the typical the typical tropes right like oh well I feel bad but if this is Hamas is doing they're to blame why do they attack Israel and unprovoked and blah 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 and he told me something today and this is up weeks of going back and forth like we're just getting heated and like I mean I'm like you're a coward you're a baby killer I'm telling all these things to him right but we somehow find a way to come to you know we calm down and you just you know we continue to have a conversation but today he said something profound to me he's like you know what I think you guys are losing the PR, you guys before were losing the PR war. Like I saw a video today of a Palestinian doctor and he was showing all these dead bodies and he had this, he had this plastic bag he pulls out and he pulls out like the limbs of a little baby girl. Yeah. Like and with, with like just the stocking down, she's going to school. And he's like, man, even, and he's a, he's a military guy, like, you know, old school. He's like, even a, a cold hearted, you know, SOB like me, when I saw mm -hmm. that, it hurt me. Like I still see that right now. And he's like, if the world sees that picture, like, there's no way they can support what's happening. And he's like, me, I have my own political agenda for why I do, but even for me, that makes me question like why I would support a political agenda. And so I think for people who are not used to seeing this, who don't know the, fate, the reality of <clears throat> what is happening in the Muslim world, yeah. for them, it's really important. Because for us, we're used to it. Right? We saw Afghanistan, we saw Bosnia, we saw Chechnya, we saw you know, Syria, we saw Yemen, we saw you know, Palestine before, yeah. we've seen Iraq, you know, we saw all these things. For us, we get desensitized, right? For them, this is all new. Yeah. Right? They've never seen it. With social media, they never, because their, their media is extremely sanitized. Yeah, extremely is. sanitized, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? When it comes to the brutality they do. So for them to see this, it's so important for them. It, I mean, at, at least initially for them to see the brutality of what Israel is truly about. Yeah, I think when the other thing that Owen Benjamin was, the main point, which I think was very important, was in the first segment of that clip he had, is this excessive witnessing of gory images and videos will eventually put us into a victimhood and a victim mindset just like the Jews had at the Holocaust right? right or the if I should say the Israelis use that and look lots and lots of blood and gore is uh, a reality and it's unfortunate it doesn't mean you have to watch all of it now when we were growing up and we were watching the war you know the the, the wars in Bosnia and the, the Chechnyas and all that and the Kashmir's and <clears throat> even Palestine was a part of that I'm actually glad that we actually watched that at a young age, meaning like in our later teens, um, because we did we would never have known about any of that. And what that actually prepared for us, it gave us a sense of oneness with the Ummah, and it gave us a certain type of ghira, this protectiveness for the Ummah, 
that uh, no other protectiveness, nothing else can compare to that, right? And uh, I'm glad it was kind of at the end of our formative years. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, and it prepared me personally for a lot of things later. Mentally, it prepared me for a lot of things. Because it's not like we're just watching it for the sake of watching it. We're watching it into our brothers and sisters, right? So all these things that come up now, yes, you get angry, but you can actually function at a young age when you first witness that. You just want to go and do something crazy because you don't know how to handle it. Rightfully yeah. so. I mean, rightfully so in the sense that you don't know how to handle it. And good thing that we didn't do anything crazy. You know, God forbid to anybody innocent. But something would cross your mind. It's those, at that age, it's like you're in a weird state of drunkenness when you see that stuff. Yeah. It invokes emotions, it, right? Of Very course powerful it does. emotions. But as you get older and you see it now, it you still angers you. You know how to process it, but you utilize it and you it, it, it builds a different type of fire. Inside. And you understand the complexity yeah. and the nuances behind yeah, it, right? Yeah. Um, and I think someone brings up a very important point in the chat. If you're just scrolling through it to see the violence, yeah. you can be de desensitized. Yeah, don't do that. Don't do but that. if you're actually looking at it to read what this is happening, absorb like for a moment like what this is. And I urge you, if you're, just, if you're gonna repost something, provide some context, provide your thoughts on this. Because people will also read your thoughts on this. And that's also provoking, right? Like, because you can, words, pictures are important, they say a thousand words, but providing additional context to yes. why you're posting it, all, you know, really much more a, effective. Yeah, much more effective. Yes, sir. And it, and it puts it, it puts uh, things into perspective. Yeah, yeah. What's on the table, Amir Sim? Well, just lastly, I think there's another thing that Owen was trying to say was that, and I'm not so sure about this because I'm still thinking about it. <clears throat> he was saying that the the Zionist uh, or the Jews uh, when they saw the Holocaust imagery, that created some kind of trauma for them and that they used those images as a way to excessively yep. take revenge on anyone who they thought was a threat to them, right? And I'm not so sure. I mean, I think we, we've seen a bit of that I th because we saw ISIS, right? We saw a an extremist element from Muslims that, um, you know, that, that, that went overboard in, in its implementation of or its understanding of how uh, Allah's um, laws are carried out, and I think there there is something to, to that um, when you, when you think about it that there is um, a feeling of wanting to do what was done to you onto others. You know. See, I, I think I, I kind of disagree with that. You're going to have some people, yes, right. I think it's going to be small, but I think people. collectively as an Ummah, we don't. Yeah. And the reason why is we've already demonstrated that we've seen this is I mean this is just a dip in the ocean of what we've seen collectively. I mean, Syria had 200,000 dead. I mean, people's no, faces... Million, one million total dead. Yeah, but I'm saying... In, in, I mean, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm trying, like, in one, in one year, I'm saying in the beginning. But people with, like, their faces blown off, trying to say, La ilaha illallah, burying somebody alive and saying, making him say, La ilaha illa Bashar, and he's saying, La ilaha illallah. I mean, they were doing all... I mean, documented rape cases and severing of, like... Like mutilization of the body, ripping off their genitals. Like we've seen these things, and there were brutality done in, in like in, in brutality done in, in Chechnya, in Dagestan. I think here's the fundamental difference. Yes, there's an element of rage, and that's going to happen among certain among people. But I think fundamentally we're built differently, because why? If you look at from a religious perspective, what they're doing, their Torah commands it. It literally commands to leave nothing remaining on the earth. For us, our ayat are filled with do not transgress. Yeah. Defend, but do not transgress. Do not transgress. Do not fight those that don't harm you. Don't harm the women, children, nature, vegetation, old, elderly, sick. We have very strict commands on this. You cannot be someone who's observant of your religion and ignore that text. Yeah. Right? And if you do, collectively as an ummah, we've demonstrated time and time again that we won't accept that as a norm. Even till now, even with everything going on now, how many times do we have to say this is not all the Jews? We, we, we don't, we're not forced to say that. We could easily say Jews, 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 right? But we always make a distinction. We say it's Zionists, people who are, who are actually doing this, right? There are mm. good Jews among them who don't believe in this. Mm. And that key alone distinction that we do mm -hmm. as an Ummah collectively, to me it shows the difference. Yeah. Because if you hear our, our rhetoric, it's never like, kill their babies, kill all of them, even oh, the ones yeah. that are extremists among them. They're never saying, yeah, yeah. wipe them all out, kill their babies. No, they will say, they might blame all of them as a collective, but they'll never, now just go listen to their narratives. Not one of them deserves to live, they're subhuman, they're animals, kill their babies, you know, we're gonna send bombs, you know, I mean, all kinds of stuff, like just yeah. genocidal stuff. 
I am yet to hear that stuff. I mean, think about this. They have, I and I'll be honest with you, Wallahi, I've never witnessed this, but they have telegram groups yeah. just dedicated to mocking the death of babies, Palestinian babies. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten thousand members in the telegram group of Zionists that are mocking dead babies. Hmm. And I'll, I'll be honest, I, I'm not saying it doesn't, but I'm, I'm very highly skeptical. But I have not seen or I, I'm aware of any single group like this from among the Arabs or Muslims no. that dedicates like pictures of dead Jewish babies yeah, and no, mocks it. No, and look, that's what the advantage the enemy always had. There's always an advantage, advantage that an enemy had over Muslims. And Muslims obviously always had the best advantage because they have Allah. The advantage that they have is they knew full well Especially those who are very intelligent knew that Muslims are not going to attack their children. They're not going to attack their women. They're, so they would strategically, in wars, put their women and sometimes children, el elderly, at the forefront somewhere strategically. So they knew that that the Muslim men or the, the army wouldn't do anything, right? And that's another concern that the believer has, that when there's an enemy, they have to also think about the people that are innocent among them. It makes it a lot more difficult. Yeah. If you're animals like these Zionists that are you know sub-animal, Right? You're, they're not going to care about any of that kind of stuff. And I think the other thing is, look, we have to also uh, also look into some of the um, things that are arising that we never expected. You know, like, there's like, did you guys know that there's, there, there's a group of people that are even like atheists that are kind of like banding together and studying the Quran together? It's crazy. I've seen it. It's crazy. And they're yeah. like, you know what? I, so look, this, this teaches us, look, Islam also is very experiential. It's not, you're not always going to convince people through argumentation and, and, and debate and discourse. Sometimes people just have to see what's happening. And Islam is, because this person, who, like you were talking about the pictures, there's this atheist woman that my wife was telling me about. And she was like, you know what? I, I never really knew about this conflict. Um, there's no way that these people are strong. I mean, what is it? What, let me correct myself. What, how are these people so resilient? And what is this faith of theirs that's allowing them to continue? They're not surrendering. They're not leaving. They just keep thanking God, right? So she started reading the Quran, right? And she started looking into like, what is it that? So what is it that that, that charges these people? And the ayat of the Quran are many that if Allah subhanahu wa taala sees a nation, He can change you. He can change and bring other people. Right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can exchange people for you. We complained about those people leaving Islam, the atheists and all that kind of stuff, all this, this whole atheistic and agnostic rhetoric. Whoever thought that this war in Gaza, Gaza would start being these people that were coming into Islam were replacing people that were leaving Islam. Right? It's, it's subhanAllah, it's, it's phenomenal. That's what. That's the reason why we're going to be much more different because we see those things. We see the benefit in everything. Right, we see the benefit in everything, even in warfare, even in genocide. We see benefit, in a sense of we're benefiting through our iman with this. Right? What about you, uh, Sheikh Omar Haqqani? You've been toothless for a while. <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> no, I think uh, the if if of course the news when you watch it and when you read it, it is pretty depressing. No doubt about that. But what you mentioned here, I think. Uh, you mentioned one story, but I, there are many stories like that. Hundreds. That uh, people are, you know, open-minded individuals are turning towards Islam and trying to investigate or learn about what is it that is driving these people. What is it that the mother who lost all of her children, all mm. of her children, and her hands are bl soaked in the blood of her children, but yet she says... Alhamdulillah. What is it that is making them do this? These people cannot be, you know, uh, normal people like you and I. I mean, what is it that is making the father who lost, you know, everything, his entire family, his wife, his children, his house and everything. Yet he says, you know, Alhamdulillah, which is basically, you know, praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in some cases, some of them thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala no. for choosing them to bless them with this. I mean, they see it as a blessing. <laughs> like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose them and their families to bless them with whatever they're going through. Whether yeah. it's loss of life, loss of you know family, loss of um, house, business. I mean, the whole thing is destroyed. But yet they're thankful and they're content with yeah. w w what they're seeing. So... Um, you know, for the open-minded individuals, 
it's raising a lot of questions what is it that is driving them mm. and and a lot of people are exploring uh, Islam and and there are a lot of people who uh, who are converting as well I mean this is similar to I think what we had seen post 9-11 as well there was a lot of negativity out there against Islam and Muslims and but when people uh, um, you know s started reaching out and, and, and investigating and, and researching on their own many cases are like that mm. similar to I mean even more recently for example um, uh, and, uh, I mean overall any time there is an event like this or there's you know a backlash against Islam and Muslims at the end of the day it turn, ends up being positive in way, one way or the other that it brings people more to Islam mm. and, and, and brings closer to them this has always been the case. It's always been the case, yes, sir. 